the absolute biggest liar I've ever seen on X. And no, he's not one of the regulars. He's not one of the usuals. He's just an engagement farmer eager to get you to click and respond and repost and do all that because someone is wrong on the internet and it simply cannot stand. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> This may bring in a couple of new folks. Maybe it does. It'd be interesting if it if it does. And for that matter, uh, you know, maybe this should be a sponsored space that's available. I don't know. What do you think? Should I find someone who wants to pay me to have a sticker here? I think that'd be, that'd be crazy. You know, what wouldn't be crazy, though, is uh, going to the old uh, National Drive Electric uh, event in Stillicum which is happening today. Yes, today at 4 p.m., uh, 4 to 7 p.m., I'll be there, apparently. I haven't had a chance to talk with them, but I love going to events like this. It's a whole lot of fun. So what are we talking about today? It is not good. This clowny fella, Nick Huber. This clowny fella, Nick Huber. At Sweaty Startup, Sweaty Nick here uh, pushed out this hot one because um, he needs engagement. And on X, engagement pays. And if you'd like to know how to solve that, it's pretty straightforward. Right now, it incentivizes the worst of the worst to be just awful. Uh, what you do is you make it so that if you get community noted, maybe uh, you don't get paid. Or maybe the people writing the community notes get paid instead. That would incentivize honesty. People would write posts saying, I have to be honest if I want to get paid. Just thinking out loud here, instead of lies like this, getting kajillions of views. This was at a half million views, I think, when I saw it. Let's see if it says. I reposted it on X, but I did not repost it, actually. I just screenshotted it, so no engagement from me, Sweaty Huber. When are we going to wake up to the electric vehicle disaster? Ooh, off to a good start. They aren't feasible. Stop you right there. Don't worry, every single item on this list is equally pants on head ridiculous. Uh, electric vehicles face a long road to becoming feasible on a larger scale, uh, but uh, they have been viable as eco-friendly alternatives for a long time. This article's three years old, but they'll need to become more affordable. And we're seeing that happen in some countries. Uh, for example, China. They've cracked the affordable EV code, and I'm just going to show you this. It's just all the trends showing adoption. These are not the kinds of uh, charts that you see when things are not feasible. These are charts, evidence. Oh, they're all up and to the right, you guys. Come on. What are we talking about here? We're burning coal to fuel them. Well, if you've been on this or any channel, you know that's not true. If you're a living human being, you'd go, oh, I've got, I'm going to respond to that. Now, this guy did get community noted, but it doesn't matter. The damage is done. I saw a guy say, well, that's why I always engage with them so that when a community note happens, I'll see it. But you engaged with them, and that community note doesn't always come. Terrible. We're burning coal to fuel them. I found this handy chart showing how much coal is used in 2023. The US, not much. Uh, Japan, Germany, China's still using quite a bit. But let's roll this back through time and watch how much more coal we used to use, all of these countries. And boy, is it getting up there. So now China, of course, we're back to 1987. China did not have a substantial economy in 1987. But you can see that the amount of coal we used to use it's gone down. All the countries that are really getting serious about EVs, apart from China, are using less coal. And even China is the leader in wind and solar deployment. And we've got some more stuff coming up about that, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're still talking about coal. Despite the major energy losses, a power plant is still more efficient. Recall that an internal combustion engine loses around 80% of the energy that goes into it. A coal-burning power loses 68%, thus an EV powered by coal uses less energy than one powered by gasoline. The emissions are even better. These studies are not new. Everyone knows this. Everyone, even uh, Nick Sweaty. So I don't know what to make of that except that it's engagement farming, it's dishonesty for profit. The batteries are heading to landfills and causing serious damage. Are they? Because they're not. Even a car's 12 volt battery doesn't head to a landfill. Do you know why? Because they're worth too much in recycling. 
The truth about EV battery recycling, what happens to them? What we're finding is, how are they disposed of? Well, what we're finding is batteries do not go to landfills because they're too valuable. And they're really not even going to recycling because there's, they're still too valuable before they are dead. If they have any life in them at all, they're worth money. They're worth more than the minerals inside them. And if you don't believe me, there's a little site I found called eBay. Yeah, you can buy old Nissan Leaf modules, packs, you name it. These are worth way more than the minerals inside. And of course they are. If you have a solid gold watch and it breaks, it is still worth more than the gold content because there's craftsmanship. Somebody will want to fix it. So you're always going to exceed your melting value on a gold watch even if it's in potentially rough shape, I would imagine. China controls both cobalt and lithium production. And by the way, I didn't mention Redwood Materials. Everyone here knows Redwood Materials. They are one of many companies that is already recycling lithium batteries. We know this. It exists. It's a real thing. China controls both cobalt and lithium production controls them. Okay, so they don't, well, let's take a look here. China could control up to one third of the world's lithium by 2025. So one third is not control. Uh, they can exert influence, but that doesn't mean they control it. That's not what control is. If you have a monopoly, you would need 60 to 90, maybe even north of 90%. And depending what it is, I mean, come on. If we look at it here, 67% uh, of global lithium supply is processed by China and 73% of the cobalt. They don't have it. They just process it. You're mad that they built the factories that we're unwilling to build? That's kind of a bit cynical. So if we're talking about cobalt, well, let's talk about there not being any cobalt. The sur uh, power surge, the rise of LFP. LFP keeps growing every year. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are almost as good as the nickel metal batteries that we use currently, the NMCs, but it doesn't matter if they're cheaper. LFPs are almost as good. They're right there. In many ways, they're better. You get more cycle life. And an LFP battery has lithium iron and uh, phosphate, and that's it. And, you know, the, the steel for the can, I suppose. And it just keeps growing. These have no cobalt. Uh, they have no nickel. These are conflict-free and nobody controlled, well, they still, we still need more lithium, you know, production and all that. If only somebody was working on that right here in the good old US of the A. Turns out there are companies doing it and Tesla is not the only one. We're on it. Lithium comes from everywhere. Speaking of a giant A, we're back to Nick. Sweaty says, nuclear is nowhere near feasible. Is that true? Now, I know in the U.S. and certainly parts of Europe, it's not super feasible because it takes so long to bring online and the cost often has tremendous overruns. Makes it uh, a slow solution, but that's okay because in China, they just approved 11 new nuclear reactors with funding, $31 billion, and China has a world-leading 26 power units under construction, and I believe this would be 31 in addition to that. China's where most EVs are. China is already past 50% EVs in terms of new sales. It'll take a little bit of time for the old cars to get off the market, but not forever. Within 20 years, China could be 0% imported fuel. That would be very exciting for them. And then, of course, we've got uh, our grid needs rebuilt, and we don't have the money. Normally, I'm not uh, a real stickler on grammar, but if we're doing a big old bundle of stupid, you get to own it. Needs uh, to be rebuilt. Nick Sweat. Uh, so, yeah. That is true, by the way, our outdated grid. We've been working on it for 100 years, but over the last 25 years, we have done very little to modernize. That has nothing to do with EVs. The grid is falling apart with or without them. We need to upgrade them. That is not up for debate. So, oh uh, yeah, these last ones I don't have slides for because I don't think I need them. Asia isn't committed to climate change. Bull. That's a load of bull. That's tremendous bull. We've just covered the ways, many of the ways in which that is bull. But I'm taking it, Nick, that you've never been to China. And you certainly haven't been over a period of time to see the, the change in the air quality. 
it's changed. The U.S. taxpayers foot the bill for environmental initiatives that aren't economically feasible, like solar, wind. So solar and wind are the cheapest forms of power available today in terms of levelized cost of energy. That's not up for debate. You can... There's one website I found that has a bunch of sources. It's called Google, and you can look at it. You can find out what it's up to. And electric transport. Well, guess what? The nice thing about wind and solar is that you can decentralize them a bit. Wind still needs to be outside the city. Solar doesn't. That means you need fewer long-distance transmission lines. What are you talking about? You're lying, and you're doing it for engagement because you're a cheap, cheap donkey. Wealth transfers to Asia and they continue to pollute even more. My God, what are you talking about? Oh, it ain't happening, folks. Wake up. So, Sweaty Nick here wants us to be woke. I don't know if that's the right approach. Uh, guess what, guys? Uh, this is all ridiculous nonsense, and I'm a little tired of it, but hey, man, what are you going to do? Uh, what I'm going to do is say... Uh, support me throw me a nickel i don't know uh you can become a patron on patreon a, a subscriber on uh x or a member on youtube all of those work there's a paypal link i imagine you could just send me a one-time tip all that works if you support this kind of independent fact checking it would be awesome because that guy's making a mint being dishonest and terrible and not showing the work can't show the math math ain't there he made it up so uh, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? I'll leave it. Uh, subscribe, like, you know what you're doing.